Right, so as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm making slight changes in my portfolio or my investment strategy. So yeah, in this video, we'll be talking about that. Let's hit it up. Right, let's start with the allocation first. I will be allocating 30% of my portfolio towards China Water Affairs Group. Now this is a huge allocation towards one company, but I'm very, very comfortable doing that because uh, the industry they are working in, it's very, very safe. Like it's water, right? Everybody would need water and that's the last thing somebody would give up on. So yeah, uh, it's extremely safe. At the same time, uh, the company pays out dividends, uh, over 5% in dividends, which is really, really good. It's like, um, I can't say risk free, but very near to risk free money coming in and uh, at five plus percent risk free uh, returns is amazing. So yeah, this is great. And uh, furthermore, I see a huge potential in growth for this company. I think they are uh, they are trading at a huge discount currently and they should double in valuation. So yeah, I'm very, very comfortable putting my money into China Water Affairs Group. Secondly, uh, I will be putting 30% of my uh, portfolio towards growth stocks, growth stocks like uh, JD.com, Pingan Healthcare. And I'm also looking for other companies specifically in the tech industry uh, that would uh, would complement my portfolio, right? Uh, I mentioned in the last episode that I will be selling out of AEM Group, which is the only tech-based uh, uh, tech company in my portfolio right now. So once I'm sold out of the, that company, I need some company to replace it. If you guys have any recommendation of uh, some market leaders, uh, uh, he, some company that you have a uh, huge conviction on, I would love to do a company analysis video on that and f get out a valuation on that. So uh, I can keep it in my loop. If you have certain companies, just list them down in the comments below. Um, I would love them to be from China itself, but if there's a company from US, don't uh, don't hesitate and mention that as well. I'm currently not investing in US because of the government policies and the monetary policies. Uh, and I think uh, the stock market itself is overvalued in that uh, that area. And I see more opportunities in China itself. So that's why I'm investing in China. But definitely I would like to keep some companies in loop, like the good companies like Apple, Google. Uh, yeah, these two companies specifically. So I would like to have my eyes on them in case there's a correction in the market or there's a recession or something where I can scoop up some shares of that. I have no hate against the companies. I use both of their products every day. So yeah, I, I, I believe in the companies. I believe they are awesome, but I just need to enter when I am uh, comfortable doing so. And hence I'm, I am currently staying away from the US market. So yeah, uh, then moving on to the third one, uh, dividend growth stocks where I will be alloc allocating about 30% of my portfolio as well. These stocks are like Pingan uh, Insurance Group. So these companies have uh, dividends, they pay out dividends and at the same time they are growing. So dividends themselves are growing as well. Uh, so that will make 30% of my my portfolio. Pingan Group itself is very, uh, I mean the insurance group itself is uh, trading very low right now and it's a great opportunity I would say if somebody out there wants to know I think it's a very good opportunity to enter right now but I per personally don't have the cash to do that so I was thinking of selling out of uh, DBS and UOB to invest into uh, Pingan Group but then again uh, the thing is that I bought into DBS and uh, UOB because when they were very very low and uh, currently their their dividend is cut but if they get back to the pre-pandemic level, I will be getting 7% uh, yield on cost to me. So which is uh, which is very, very good. Hence, I won't be selling uh, these two companies for now. Uh, moving on, the fourth one will be uh, commodities. I will be allocating 5% of my portfolio towards commodities. And this is a new one. Uh, until now, I was like, I was really, really looking into commodities for a very long time and finding which commodity would suit me best. I also uh, tried to find out some uh, ETFs, which like, you know, I don't have to uh, involve my time in, so I can just invest into the ETF and they can manage whatever they want to manage. Uh, something like uh, Jim Rogers, like he's so deep into commodities, right? But then I see there's always a lot of exposures, exposure towards oil, which I'm not comfortable with. Hence, uh, I have never invested in commodities until now. 
uh, when I have figured out what I wanted and I will be making another video on what particular commodity that I'm buying so that would be 5% and uh, if you tell you everything that's already 95% and I will be leaving 5% of my portfolio as a buffer for some of the companies to go up and down and whatever not uh, on top of this uh, of like my portfolio I will be putting out 20 to 30% uh, in cash so yeah I have to save a lot of money right now I have been constantly uh, bothered by this fact that I have no more cash left to invest and this is the dilemma of an investor right when you have cash you uh, slide dip and you want to buy and you you run out of cash very fast so i've decided that i will keep it and uh, towards 30 percent level and every time the market the overall market drops 10 percent i will deploy 10 percent of my cash towards the market so the maximum would be 30 percent right so yeah i will i will do it that way uh that being said let's talk about my cpf so my cpf right currently i hold aem dbs uob in my cpf uh, investment account okay. i'm already selling out of uh, aem so let's not talk about that dbs on uob i'm quite bullish on them but i think they the price is already uh, up there like uh, the price is already uh, at the fair level i think uh, it's not at a discount anymore so i don't want to add any more of these two companies hence I was in a constant struggle to find companies to invest in. I'm not fond of the Singaporean market. I don't think there are market leaders in uh, in the Singapore Stock Exchange. And I'm limited to just invest in SGX through my CPF account. Hence, uh, I now have decided to just put it on autopilot by investing into uh, unit trust. I personally prefer uh, ETFs, but I don't have a choice because there's uh, there's only certain things that you can invest your CPF uh, money in. So I found some uh, unit trusts that are focused in uh, all over Asia and uh, uh, China itself. So I will be putting my money on autopilot through that. There are two funds that are selected. The first fund is the Schroeder International Selection Fund focused on the greater China. Their top holdings include TSMC, Alibaba, MediaTek and Tencent. So like the uh, semiconductor and the uh, the great I mean the tech uh, giants of uh, China I have uh, exposure to none of these companies even though I consider them uh, companies that lead in their own sectors uh, Alibaba definitely I have uh, I have uh, exposure into uh, JD.com but not Alibaba so I can like you know uh, balance it off I don't want to invest directly into Alibaba so yeah this uh, fund would help me diversify that way so I'm just putting in uh, into this until now right i wasn't investing into any fund because whenever i saw a fund i wanted to see the companies that they invest in and uh, i wanted to reflect the same ideology that i have but then again there's no point of investing in a fund right if you want to find the same company as you have invested in then why not just invest it in them yourself so this way i i'm forcing myself to diversify into the other companies that i would personally uh, not put my money directly in so this is one way and they have shown great performance i think obviously they have a pot potential themselves as well tsmc also i think they are not i think but they are the market leader in the semiconductor industry the second fund i'm investing in is the pine bridge asia small cap fund which is focused on the small cap companies within asia as the name suggests this small cap companies are where you see the most growth right uh, like you know it's easier for companies to grow from let's say a million dollar to uh, to maybe three four million dollars which is three four x growth uh, compared to uh, let's say a 20 billion dollar company to grow three or four x so there's a lot of growth potential in these companies but there's also a, a lot of risk because there's very very little information available and they are very operating in a niche uh, and they're not di diversified itself so i think uh, as a retail invest investor, there's a lot of risk going into small cap companies, investing into small cap companies. But as a, a fund itself, they are investing into a lot of companies, so they are diversified. And at the same time, they have the capabilities to dig out information, like they can go down to the companies themselves, they can talk, they can see, and all those things. So uh, they can meet the management particularly. So I think there's a lot of advantage uh, if you're investing into small cap companies to invest through a fund. Hence. Uh, I have uh, gone through that as well. 
Uh, now these two com uh, the these two funds bells themselves out. So like Shrouders is the uh, large cap companies, right? And then uh, Pine Bridge is the small cap company. So yeah, I will be investing four hundred dollars a month into each of these funds, and that would going forward build up my CPF investment. That that's it. And I've also decided to like actually. <laughs> So I have made a mistake, right? If you saw my uh, previous video on uh, AEM Holdings, uh, where I invested without doing uh, my due diligence and I did it very late. I was just freaking lazy to do it. Uh, and yeah, and that 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 was a mistake, right? Now I'm not, uh, I don't have any conviction on that company and I, I need to pull out my money, which is trading below my average cost. So I will be waiting for that uh, to cross my average cost and just sell out of that company. And I'm now decided to actually do the research before I invest. Be disciplined about it. That's the the hardest thing uh, investors like investors have to do. Right? Be capable. Be disciplined. So yeah, I hope being able to put out videos, I'm a bit more accountable to myself and I'm able to stay disciplined. Uh, and yeah, and I, I would like like you to call out on uh, on anything that I do like if you find that uh, that is not the right thing to do or whatever just call it out and let me know uh, and I <laughs> I want to like improve in my investment yeah so that's about it that's the uh, little changes that I'm doing in my investment right now uh, in my portfolio uh, and uh, it's not gonna happen straight away I'm not gonna like stick to the percentage straight away or find companies to invest in to bring my uh, my allocation to that person target percentage level it's going to take years to happen it's like if i find a company that i'm going to wait for it to drop below the uh, valuation the fair value uh, i have gotten and then i will slowly dollar cost average into it so yeah that's about it the next video i will be doing is the commodity uh, thing that i'm investing in so stay tuned it's quite interesting and something that i've recently come across and i've been reading about it for a couple of uh, weeks right now. So yeah, catch you in that video. Until then, ciao.